Rusty Quill presents Trice Forgotten, Episode 7, Surely. <laughs> Come on, you miserable worms, get up! Honestly, you haul one little boat to shore. It was heavy, Captain. I think I've dislocated my shoulder. I can taste my own teeth. Now, what are we doing on this shallow spit of land with nary a convenient mooring spot in sight, I hear you ask? Developing a hernia. My crew, nay, my friends. It's the day has come. The day me and you, but mostly me, have long dreamed of. For I have procured something very special indeed. Two somethings, in fact. Two very special somethings that will lead us to treasure. Are those sea turtles? I find your sense of humour perplexing at times, Captain. It's not a joke. These are treasure-finding turtles. Nor, you pin their arms down. See if I look around for some vines or Using something. Using turtles to find treasure is a long and storied tradition among folks who sail under... certain flags. Pirates! She means pirates! It is said that... Because she used to be a pirate. It is said that a pair of mating turtles fed a tiny nugget of treasure will settle at the spot where gold is laid. Oh, quite romantic, really. But if what you say is true, how is it that every sea from here to the Caribbean has not been fished dry of turtles? You can't just use any old turtle. No. No! They have to be bonded, heart and soul, with the person who raised them. Inez, about those vines... Two turtles fed with a tiny piece of gold on a pirate captain's lap will lead you to treasure. I've seen it. You've seen it? Saw the gold come out of the ground plain as day. Glittering. Like a better tomorrow. Well, I suppose it's not inconceivable that a certain species of Kelonioidea might develop sensitivity to certain metals. Hmm? Um, hmm. Uh... Stranger things have occurred in nature. Uh, salmon return to their native waters to spawn. Uh, dung beetles follow the path of the Milky Way. Uh, it could be scientifically... Uh, Inez? I think it's bollocks. Too bad I'm not giving anyone a choice. Let's split into two teams and take a turtle each. I suggest that... I'll go with Noor. Right then. I suppose that leaves me and... I'm not digging. And I'm not talking to a turtle either. Oh, there had better be gold. Oh, and then I'll buy a complete set of Encyclopedia Britannica. You know, it's nearly 20 volumes now. I must confess, I do have a modest little daydream of one day contributing something to it myself, so I think owning it is a wise first step. Oh, that is, of course, if there's room for it in our house. Our house? Oh, you, me, Lesties, Inez, and Baker. We'll find a little cottage somewhere. <laughs> Siva, if we really do find treasure, do you imagine a Lesties will want to set eyes on any of us again? Oh, well, no... No, of course. I suppose. But you and I could... Uh, uh. It hardly matters. You know as well as I do that this plan is... dubious, to say the least. Oh, but imagine, Noor. Imagine that we find the gold. What would you do with your share? 
Oh, my guess is that you would buy yourself a boat and go sailing every day across the islands and then in the evening bring back all manner of fascinating flora and fauna. Back to our house? Well, yes. If, if you want. <laughs> Siva, you know I, I value your company, but... Look, I- snails! will make a fine addition to my collection. Do you see? Much smaller shells in the Architectonica. From my reading, I believe them to be of the genus Helicardionidae. Of course, I shan't know for certain until I'm back on the ship and can verify it in Mr. Blair's book. The most interesting thing about this family is their use of love darts during their courtships. You better go now. Go where? Back to the ship to verify the snails. Uh, But we're supposed to... Uh, I am capable of carrying out this wild goose chase on my own. I'm sure you could make better use of your time elsewhere. But I don't mind if we just... Siva? Please? Yes. I I see. Uh, Yes. I will take my leave. Give me strength. Anything? (sighs) Not yet. (sighs) Que sorpresa. Look, it's here, all right. We just haven't found it yet. You'd be better off letting me have one of those turtles for my collection. You're not butchering them, Innes. Conserving. I can serve animals. By the way, you're not having them. What makes you so certain there's treasure on this island anyway? Celestis, whose treasure are we looking for? Gammon. What? Gammon, all right? We're looking for Gammon's treasure, which is definitely on this island. Oh! Now, before you come off on one... I don't know which stupidity to be angry at first. The fact that this is an obvious trap, or the fact that if we did by some oblique chance find treasure belonging to a man nicknamed Gammon... You'd be painting a target on our back so wide it could be seen from the moon. It's here. And when we find it, we'll have enough riches to retire to a beach on the other side of the world before he knows it. I can't believe you'd be so stupid as to trust... You don't know him. Just misunderstood, is he? No. He's a rotten sack of potato mold masquerading as a man. But that's not the point. He likes me. (laughs) He likes you? You wouldn't understand. It's not me that has trouble comprehending human emotion, Captain. (laughs) I've yet to hear a single personal fact about yourself. Siva's always going on about his nanny. Even Nor tells stories about Aiden, but you. You seem to have sprung fully formed out of a pit of bile with no human attachment whatsoever. You know nothing about my family. Go on, then. What did the illustrious Delunas do to fail to live up to your impossible standards? My impossible standards? You expect us to work every hour of the day whilst constantly endangering our lives, not lifting a finger to help? Misdirection. You know what? I will tell you one thing about my past. I thought my last master was the worst I could ever have. I was wrong. This is pointless. It must be further inland. Uh, Sorry, sorry. Didn't mean to intrude. No intrusion. I, I'm just writing. I'll just go back to my bunk and... Anything you'd like to talk about, Siva? No, no. I'll let you get on. Are you sure? Because I can do this later. 
Well, it's Noor. I don't understand it. Really, I don't. I try and try. I bring them things and they seem to like my company. But then as soon as I press the point in any way, they stop talking and tell me to go somewhere else. I would be distraught to learn I was causing them any kind of discomfort and much of the time that does not seem to be the case. But then they simply clam up out of nowhere and I... I don't know what to do. A heavy matter indeed. Unrequited love. Well, I am... I don't know about love, exactly. Uh, Certainly, I admire them. But they don't always respond how you'd like. That's exactly it. I'm at my wit's end. I'll just have to try something else. If only they would tell me what they want. You know, I've been to a lot of places, and I hope to go to many more before I pass on. But one thing has remained the same, no matter where I travelled. People rarely say exactly what they want. But it would be so much easier if they did. (laughs) Of course. How can I explain? Ah, now, who do you think I'm writing to? I don't know. I suppose I have never considered that our crew might have attachments outside of the ship. I'm writing to my husband. Your husband? Gabe. He's very far away from where we are. He lives on land, Migmagi. Although I suppose you might know it by the name Nova Scotia. You have a husband in the province of Canada? I do. But you've never mentioned him. Sometimes we protect the things closest to your heart by not talking about them. Don't you miss him? More than anything. And doesn't he miss you? Oh, yes. Then why are you apart? If I was lucky enough to be with the one I loved... Because people are complicated. And we don't always say what we want. Jordan, oh, what in the world? It's open. Gabe. Baker? There was a time to send word. I I thought you were. Hmm. But you're fine. What do you want? I, 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 I didn't come back for me. Of course not. Why would you? She needs help. And who is she? She is... The child can't speak for herself. No, she can't. Or won't. That's the problem. Where in my bed? You remember where that is? (sighs) She's out. Exhausted after that journey we had. She looks like she's been through a heap of something. Hasn't said a word since I found her half drowned off the coast of Jamaica. Belly eats. It's like she's living, but she's not alive. What are you doing here, Bacon? I mean, there's a hundred spots between here and Jamaica you could have chosen to rest up. Uh, I couldn't. Give her what she needed, and I thought maybe you... I missed you. I thought you were dead. I am sorry. Five years. I am sorry. Five years, and not a word... I'm so sorry. If you say sorry one more time, I'll turn you out of this house right now. I... Yes. You know I wasn't happy about you going, but I would have understood. I mean, I could see you needed to be somewhere else. Why didn't you talk to me? Didn't know what to say. 
Well then, guess there's not much to say now, is there? You can sleep on the floor. I'll make up a bed. Gabe, please. We can talk about what to do with this girl of yours in the morning. In the meantime, you better have a good, hard think. About what? How long you intend to stay? That girl, she'll be the death of me. Or more likely, someone else. She didn't mean to. She can speak for herself, thank you. Now, Elestis, what have you got to say? He was being stupid. There are plenty of stupid people in the world, Elestis. We don't go holding their heads underwater. Why not? It's the quickest way. To do what? To stop them from being stupid again. You'll apologize and bring that boy's family a gift. Some of that salmon we smoked last week should do it. But why? Because other people are all we have. We look after our neighbors and they look after us. But I don't need looking after. I can take care of myself just fine. Of course you can, Elistis. Nobody doubts how strong you are or how capable. But isn't it nice sometimes to have someone dote on you? To teach you how to smoke salmon or tell you stories? I'd rather be making stories. Oh, yeah? You want to be an adventurer like my sweet seafarer? Mm. Ugh. Fine. I'll go apologize. Will that make you stop? Should we be worried, Gabe? I mean, talking like that. She'll be fine. She'll find the right place for herself. In time. Fifteen foot high at least. We saw the wave coming off the starboard bow and we were powerless to stop it. <laughs> I tell you, you don't know the sea. Until she, she showed, showed you, you the, the back, back of, of her, her hand. hand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Told this one before, have I? Only every time there's a storm. Well, that's the trouble with coming inland. You stop making new stories to tell. Do you think I'll ever get to make stories like yours? If that's what you want. I think we should all be making stories by going to bed and dreaming. <laughs> Off you go, Alistis. <laughs> and no reading into the small hours. Of course not, Gabe. Night, Baker. What's she reading now? Tales of the Deep. <laughs> you know, sea monsters, pirate ships. Well, I promise I didn't give it to her. No, no. She picked it up in Halifax all by herself. She's old enough to do a lot of things by herself now. Not much younger than us when we met. That's different. How? She's been through a lot. She... She'll never put what she's been through behind her if she doesn't go out and start seeing the world herself. What do you say? You know as well as I do that she won't stay here hunting squid and squirrels her whole life. She can't go out there on her own. I know. And that's why you're going with her. Okay. No. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. It's been more than I can say having you both here with me. But I've seen the way your eyes sparkle when you're telling your old story. I know she's not the only one that wants a chance to make more. <laughs> Am I wrong? I can't abandon you again. So this time it won't be abandonment. You're going to take our girl into the world and show her what there is to be seen. And then you're going to sit down and write to me about it. Write? <laughs> Why do you think I spent so much time teaching you your letters? <laughs> not for my health, I can tell you that. Who says I was improving? And you're going to improve more by writing to me, once a month at least, and I want to know everything. Where you go, what you eat, how many boys Alistair beats up along the way, 
<laughs> you had this all planned out. Baby, the moment she stepped back in my home, I knew it wouldn't be forever. And that's all right. You need to be out there. It seems I need to be here with my school and my people. Just don't forget this time. Forget what? That there are people here who love you. This is your home. Gabe. Shh, 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 now. Come on. We, we still got tonight, at least. How long since you've seen him? Going on a few years now. A few years? I keep my promise, one letter a month, sometimes more. And that's enough? People are complicated, Siva. We need things that don't always make sense. I see. Or rather, I don't see, and I'm not sure I ever will, but yes, I see. Come here, lad. <laughs> Thank you, Faker. Now, pass me that rice. Coming up on dinner time. Touch of pink on the horizon. Talking about the weather now, are we? Fascinating. I'm saying it'll be dark within the hour. We should get back to the ship. I'm not stopping now. Oh! Give up, Alestes. We've dug holes all over this godforsaken rock and we've found exactly nothing. There isn't any treasure. There isn't any gold. He was toying with you. No, there has to be. Why does there have to be? Because he promised you? Because I... Because I sold something important to him. The second we struck gold, I was going to go back and exchange them. What did you give him? None of your... Nose bracelets. How desperate are you? What? Anyone with half a brain could see that this plan had more holes in it than one of your pathetic fishing nets. Yet you're so desperate to believe you can get lucky on some half-cooked fairy tale about sea turtles that you gamble away your crewmate's possessions. I've had enough. I'm going to find Nora and see where we're going to roll back to the ship. Fine, go. I'm not stopping until... What was that? I think. I think. Was that? Don't just stand there. Pick up your shovel and dig. Yes. 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 Get out. Carefully. Oh, you be careful. That's it. Oh my God. It's real. I can't believe it. I knew it was real. I knew that old goat would never lie to me. What? What is it? No. What's in there? Let me see. I don't... It's not... It's just... A note. Nothing else. Better luck next time, kid. Love, Gammon. Kiss. I... He... It was a trick. He lied. Just a dirty, rotten trick! He said... He said... He said there was treasure! But I believed him. I believed him. What are you looking at? Nothing. Go on then. Fill your boots. Say I told you so. Run off and spread the word that Alestes of the Netta Wansom is the worst captain to sail the seven seas. A dupe, a fool, a naive idiot with gold in her eyes. I don't reckon there's anything I could say that you're not saying to yourself.
We should get back. Baker wanted us to stop in at port on the way. Check for letters. Are you... all right? (laughs) Nothing that the sight of Gammon's blood on my sword won't fix. Just in time, food's on the table. Oh. Mm, yes, meal. Mm, mm, mm. mm. Any luck? These are for the pot. Are those the dudders? Mm. I want those shells once you're done with them. Uh, right, of course. We came back via port, as you asked. Anything for me? Oh, you mean... Uh, you mean... Any interesting messages? Nothing for you, Baker. But, Siva, something for you. What? Who could possibly... What? Why are you smiling? Why don't you take a look? Uh, It's from Mr. Blair. He says... He says... My goodness. Don't leave us in suspense, lad. He says he might have found a position for me at the Queen's Museum. (laughs) (laughs) You did well. Shiva, that's wonderful. Isn't it? I hope you don't mind. The note wasn't sealed and Ines saw Mr. Blair's signature, so we snuck a peek and... (laughs) Mashallah, I'm so delighted for you. A Queen's Museum? That's not to be sniffed at. It's... it's a dream come true. And what's with the expression? It's the opportunity of a lifetime, Siva. Yes, I suppose it might be. <clears throat> um, unless... Captain, could we make port at Kalativu? Mr. Blair says I can leave word of my response for him there. Headed that way anyway. Congratulations. Are you sure nothing's wrong? Not now, Baker. Uh, I take it today wasn't everything you hoped for? Hmm. We need to alter course for Kalativu. Of course. Good of you to do that for Siva. Siva's news wasn't the only message waiting for us at port. Anne? Yes. My favour has come due. Price Forgotten is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License. The series is created by Nemo Martin and directed by Rafaela Marcus. Today's episode was written by Rafaela Marcus and edited by Nico Vitesse, Maddie Searle, Catherine Seaton and Catherine Rinella. Price Forgotten features Rebecca Bruff, Vic Zander, Shahan Hamza, Ashley Goh and Gigi Zahir. Price Forgotten is produced by Ian Gears, Lori Ann Davis, and production manager Natasha Johnston, with executive producers Alexander J. Newell and April Summer. To subscribe, view associated materials, or join our Patreon, visit rustyquill.com. Rate and review us online, tweet us at The Rusty Quill, visit us on Facebook, or email us at mail at rustyquill.com. Thanks for listening. <laughs>